good morning students so today in chapter number 5 we will read the second part that is fertilization in plants in the last video we have read about pollination in plants and now we will see how fertilization take place in plants as we know the pollen grain is the male gamete and the ovule inside the ovary is the female gamete so the fusion of this male and female gamete is called fertilization it is one of the important step in the process of reproduction of plants and animals where the genetic content from both parents combine to form offspring the mature pollen grain is a cell with a double wall you can see in figure b the outer layer called exine and the inner one is entine see in the middle its nucleus has already divided into a tube nucleus and a generative male nucleus and at this stage the pollen is transferred to stigma and after that only further changes occur in it next is ovule which is found in the inner part of ovary each ovule has one or two protective coverings called integuments the integuments leave a small opening the micropyle at one end for the entry of pollen tube these integuments are enclosed by nucellus which is a mass of food laden cells and further inside the nucellus is the embryo sac the embryo sac contains seven cells that is 3 plus 3 plus 1 three cells at micropylar end one egg cell and two synergids as you can see in the figure three cells at opposite end called antipodal cells and one large central cell the central cell is different containing two nuclei called polar nuclei A single ovule may produce a single seeded fruit while many ovule may produce many seeded fruit as you can see in the picture the black seeds are actually formed from many ovules and the red part is actually the ovary of a flower which turns into fruit pollen grain germinates only if it is has fallen on the stigma of the same plant species otherwise it gets decomposed stigma of the flower provides a solution of sugars to feed the pollen cell then a pollen tube grows out of the pollen grain by breaking through its outer covering called exine the generative nucleus divides into two nuclei that is male gamete nuclei also called sperm nuclei thus there are three nuclei which are not separated by cell walls they share a common cytoplasm as you can see in the figure a yellow pollen tube growing downwards and then it reaches the ovaries after growing out of the stigma and the style by dissolving tissues with the help of enzymes there it pushes through the micropyle and reaches the embryo sac after that the pollen tube enters one of the synergids and releases its two sperm nuclei of these one sperm nucleus enter the egg cell and fuses with its nucleus while the other sperm nucleus moves towards the two polar nuclei in the central cell and fuses with them as you can see in the figure that one sperm nucleus fuses with the egg cell, cell and form zygote whereas the other sperm nucleus is fuses with the two polar nuclei in the center the three nuclei fuse together to produce the endosperm nucleus as you have seen here two different fertilizations have taken place so this is called double fertilization in which one sperm nucleus fused with the egg cell nucleus and the other sperm nucleus fuses with two polar nuclei together now let's see what happens after fertilization 
So after fertilization, the petals, stamens, style and stigma wither and start falling off. So the calyx may either fall off or may remain intact in a dried and shriveled form. The ovary enlarges to form fruit. The ovarian wall forming the fruit wall. The ovary wall may either form a dry and hard fruit wall or a fleshy fruit wall. When the fruit is ripe, the seeds contained inside are released by one or the other method and grow into new plants in suitable conditions. Here given the fate of various parts of the ovary after fertilization during the formation of fruit. So I hope you have understood. Your chapter is finished. Thank you.